With this one, we're working with e, uh, rational ex equations, and we're looking at solving it. We're trying to find out what the value of x is. So we've got this one, and the very first thing that we need to worry about here is trying to find a least common denominator. This one has an x plus 5. These two have quadratic expressions, and they're both the same, which makes it nice. Uh, a little bit easier for us anyway. So with these, what we're going to do is factor them. We've got to factor both of these, and when we factor both of them, that will help us determine what the lowest common denominator is. So when we're factoring these, we've, we need to determine two numbers that multiply together to give us negative 30, but add together to give us negative 1, this b value here. So negative 30 and negative 1, that would be a negative 6 and positive 5. So you'll notice I rewrote this as the exact same thing. The only difference is with these, I have these already in factored form. So now that we've got that, we can determine, it looks like all of these have an x plus 5. Uh, these two have an x minus 6 as well. So the lowest common denominator in this case is going to be an x plus 5 times x minus 6. Now in order to solve these, what we're going to do to make it easier, instead of dealing with all these fractions all the time, what we're going to do is multiply each one of these three sections by the lowest common denominator. It's going to sound a little bit weird, but it will help us to get rid of this denominator entirely, and you'll see that as we go through. All right, so I'm going to pull that in. Uh, you'll notice that I did all of these in blue. The part in blue is this lowest common denominator. Part of the equation, when we're manipulating equations, as long as we do it to each part of the equation, both sides, the entirety, then it, it doesn't change its value. So that's what we did here. We multiplied each section here by that lowest common denominator. Now we'll go through each one of these here and we'll start crossing some stuff off. This one has an x plus 5 on top and bottom. We can cross those off. Now you see on this one we no longer have a fraction. We just have this x minus 6 times x minus 5 all over 1. So we no longer have that fraction. It helped. Okay, over here we've got uh, this x, uh, x plus 5 on top and bottom we can cross off. We've got also we have an x minus 6 on top and bottom we can cross off. That leaves me with a 4x minus 12. On the far end here, I have the same thing. I have an x minus five on, or excuse me, x plus five on top and bottom. We can cross off, and an x minus six on top and bottom. We can cross off. So now we need to determine what we have left. Let's rewrite that. So I've got an x minus six times x minus five, minus, and it's minus this entire quantity. Anytime you have a subtraction sign here, that applies to this four x and to the negative twelve as well. So I left that in parentheses just to illustrate that. In fact, on our uh, on the next one, we're going to get rid of that. And then finally over here, we've got an x squared. So let's let's get rid of that at this point. Uh, we need to distribute that negative both to the 4x and to the negative 12. So that gives us our negative 4x plus 12. So that's a big thing. It did change the sign there. That'll be one area in which students sometimes have uh, errors. All right, now that we've got that, we've got two binomials here. We're going to multiply those two together to see um, what our what the equivalent value is. So you, you can use the FOIL method, you can use the box method, any way that you want to will be just fine. But we end up with x squared minus 11x plus 30. Uh, and then we end up with whatever else we've got here, minus 4x plus 12 equals 11x. Well, in doing this, I look here and I see that I've got a 4x and a negative 11x here. Those two can be combined. Also, I see a 30 and a 12 that I can combine. So I'm going to go ahead and combine all of those together right now. That gives me x squared minus 15x plus 42. Negative 11x minus 4x is negative 15x. 30 and 12 is 42. I've got an x squared on both sides, so I need to move, um, get them all on one side. This side is going to be easier to equal 0, so I'm just going to subtract it from this side. Well, if I subtract, uh, if I've got x squared minus x squared, that gives me 0. And over here, the same thing. If I've got x squared minus x squared, that gives me 0. That just leaves me negative 15x plus 42 equals 0. So now I just solve it for x. I'm going to move my 42 onto the other side, so I subtract 42 from both sides. I end up with negative 15x equals negative 42. I will divide both sides by 15, or excuse me, by negative 15. That gives me negative 42 uh, over negative 15, which if I reduce it down, will give me 14 fifths. You can convert that to a decimal if you so desire, and that's fine. Uh, no problems here. But the big thing is trying to determine what the lowest common denominator is, then multiply each of them, all of the tops if you want to think of it that way, the numerators, by that lowest common denominator. Then you can start crossing off. You won't have any more fractions if you use that method.